outside, so I think I got past the portion to Stowe, um, you know, in the end. And uh, yeah, just wanted to try and hold, hold on to the McLaren for as long as I could. And uh, they were a few tenths a lap faster, but um, yeah, I just wanted to, you know, get my head down and uh, continue the stint. And yeah, at the end of the day, we're, you know, we're P1 in the class, which is the main thing. And Jan, you were part of this series last season and uh, you've learned to moved on and now doing Le Mans and GP3. What, what is the process like for these young guys? What sort of an opportunity is it for the likes of Nick McMillan? It's a great opportunity for these guys. I think, um, yeah, of course, we, I started here two years ago and, um, yeah, I mean, Nick is uh, pushing a lot in the car and these guys behind me, they're all going to be pushing as well. And, um, yeah, I'm just here to support them and uh, just give them some advice and I've got a really good mentor here with Alex and um, they've got a lot of mentors behind us as well so um, hopefully they can um, get a lot better in the car and um, improve so they can race maybe in the future at Le Mans. Brilliant, thanks guys. Thank well there we are on board with Andy Merrick coming through Chapel Curve down the famous hangar straight where there used to be hangars, this used to be a satellite Second World War bomber base and uh, all those hangars have now long gone into Stowe Corner, still a great corner, carry a lot of speed up to the apex and then drop down, easy to get it wrong in the exit, and if you do get it wrong, there's a barrier on the right-hand side just waiting to welcome you into its rubbery grass. Although so far, we've not had too much damage, have we? We've had quite a lot of incident, we've had a lot of drama, but apart from Ryan Ratcliffe's big off... Well, we, have, we had quite a lot of in practice, free practice, then yeah. qualifying practice, then, of course, qualifying itself, but then track conditions were way, way inferior to those that we are enjoying this afternoon. It's a beautiful afternoon here at Silverstone. Middle teens, uh, Celsius, winds blowing, taking a little bit of the temperature away if you're in the exposed areas. But if you get out of them, it's glorious. The incident early on, incidentally, between Renat Salikov and Ran Ratcliffe, when they touched at cops, no further action is being taken against those cars. Look at this in the traffic. Andrew Smith in the Acuria cost BMW up on the inside. Joe Osborne, who is a lap ahead, is on the outside, wriggling his way through traffic. It's like a giant arcade game, this, isn't it? You have to weave your way past cars all the time. Well, that's the beauty of Village Corner and Loop. It gives you flexibility to, uh, to do whatever you want. And because the track is very wide in the entry, it offers up those opportunities. As we see the two lead McLarens, the gap between them. Oh, is that a, is that a problem? I thought it might have been a problem that right rear. No, it's not. That's the car that leads the gentleman trophy. Yeah. 458 Alexander Matchell in the car that he shares with Frank Schmickler. And they are ahead at the moment of this car, Julian Westwood's car. He has taken over from start driver Ian Loggy. Team Parker Racing run the car. Stuart Parker's team. And then third in the gentleman trophy at the moment is the AF Corsa Ferrari, the Jean-Marc Bachelier, Yannick Malibor, Howard Blank car, it's the blue and white Ferrari that's been spotted being lapped on occasions in the course of the race, but he's running strongly for a podium finish seemingly within the Gentleman Trophy at the moment. Just glimpse the back of Stefano Telly going through cops as he's trying to, to run down Andy Merrick. There is the third place car in the Gentleman Trophy, that is the uh, now Howard Blank driven Ferrari. There are some liveries that work on Ferraris. I'm not entirely convinced I like that one, but it, it is different. It, it's the only colour that really works in that car is is red. Is red. Yes. Yes. In reality, but it makes it look much, much wider than it is. Just the the styling impression, those stripes, the way they broaden out over the bonnet. Those two Mercedes getting themselves together is a battle for position. It's eighth place. Harold Primat ahead of Lucas Wolf, and Primat has lost time to Wolf in this stint because he was a lot further ahead early on. Lucas Wolf going well that is the number four Audi yet again grinding to a halt this time with Pierre Hershey at the wheel yes and it's coming back in limp home mode by the looks of it as it comes down and there's a well the Jaguar is still of course retired some 30 minutes ago on the right hand side fairly safely against the barrier but if that car is going to limp round picked up picked, again, yes, yeah. picked up, well, maybe he's rebooted yeah, because yeah. you've got systems on the car you can reboot the whole electronic system and that appears to be what's done, of course, pits to car contact would enable the pits to tell the driver which switches to flick on, which ones to turn off. So he's got it refired up and uh, he may not even need to make it back into the pit lane. So there is 80, which is Nick McMillan now leading in Pro-Am. Second in Pro-Am is Joe Osborne in 38. 